All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our fireside chat featuring the true visionary and leader of blockchain space, Joe Lubin, no introduction needed, co-founder of Ethereum uh, and CEO and founder of Consensus, a leading blockchain technology company dedicated to building the infrastructure for a decentralized future. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Hey, everyone out there. So today we have the pr privilege of exploring the theme, Leaders of Tomorrow, empowering the leaders in Web3 uh, who will bring a wealth of experience and insight into the evolving blockchain industry. Without further ado, let's dive right in. How are you, Joe? So welcome to Edcon 2024. As always, happy to have you, you on our stage. You have inspired and empowered many of us leaders today in the last 10 years of Ethereum and will continue to for many, many more years. Uh, great okay. to have you, excited for our chat. Uh, absolutely. So to begin, can we get uh, some background story on um, the early days of Ethereum, how you started, just get this conversation going a little bit. Sure, so uh, my background is um, mostly as a technologist, um, so I, uh, studied electrical engineering and computer science and did about a decade of, of AI uh, research um, in mostly academic contexts. Uh, it was shallow learning back then because we didn't have a lot of data and we didn't have a lot of compute, uh, but uh, we wired computers together and created uh, um, graphical simulations of things and, and we built uh, essentially autonomous road vehicles and, and some other things. Um, and did lots of software engineering over the years. Um, I worked at Goldman Sachs for a little while uh, and was sort of at the intersection of finance um, and, and did various different kinds of technology. So uh, it's impossible for me to make Bitcoin. Uh, and so I jumped in early in 2011 um, and, and was lucky enough to meet Vitalik uh, January 1st, 2014, about a month after he wrote the white paper describing Ethereum. And Ethereum uh, had a huge buzz. At that point, there were a bunch of projects that were trying to take this new invention of Satoshi, decentralized trust, and apply it to everything rather than just a narrow use case of money. Um, so there's some cool projects out there, uh, but Ethereum, uh, but uh, Vitalik's formulation was just much cleaner and much more powerful than any of the other systems. And so um, it started with, uh, with him gathering a small group of people, uh, doing meetups, uh, doing lots of conversations on Skype, um, if you remember that um, technology. Uh, and, uh, uh, and by the, the end of January uh, in 2014, um, we gathered uh, at the North American Bitcoin Conference in Miami, uh, where Metallic was presenting the white paper. Um, and we spent about a week, maybe a little more than that, in a house together, um, sort of reformatting leadership and you know, reformatting the project or formatting the project. Um, and um, essentially, we were going to do the token launch uh, on the Tuesday after uh, Vitalik uh, had given this pretty epic presentation to a standing room only audience um, uh, in a very big room. Uh, so there was a huge buzz around the project. Uh, but then we realized that, hey, um, we probably don't want to be selling something that could be perceived to be on an unregistered security uh, to Americans. So maybe we should talk to some lawyers. So we ended up doing a lot of work to, uh, uh, to give ourselves confidence that we weren't selling a security. Um, and about eight months later, we ended up uh, uh, doing the token sales. Um, probably the most important thing that I can say about those early years is that it was a very diverse, self-selected group. Um, if we, we had talked to some VCs, if we decided to take the project to a VC, uh, have it VC funded, VC controlled, VC exploited, uh, Ethereum wouldn't be Ethereum right now. It would just be an also ran project. Uh, so. Uh, the open permissionless nature of just joining the project, a very diverse group of people um, from very different philosophical and other backgrounds um, made it um, distinct uh, from almost everything else. Uh, and so 
I, I think uh, those early days of diversity and permissionlessness um, essentially led to the success of the project. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so based on how you guys started, the, the dynamic of what leadership meant uh, 10 years ago versus what that is today, um, how do you envision the future of leadership is um, currently or in the future for a decentralized world? And, and what are the qualities that will define uh, the leaders of tomorrow? Um, so I think of everything from the lens of decentralization. Uh, I do believe that we're um, in the early days of a paradigm shift uh, to a profoundly decentralized world where, where the world will we architect all of its systems on decentralized rails. Um, and so there's a, uh, we're certainly going to be moving away from large monolithic organizations with massive hierarchies uh, that operate by command and control. Um, those kinds of systems are already losing trust. Uh, they're already breaking down. Um, there's a, a Nobel uh, economics prize winner, a guy named Ronald Coase. Um, he um, uh, wrote a, some work on the theory of the firm. His work was all about uh, why it's more efficient or better uh, to have a whole bunch of functionalities inside a firm rather than uh, accessible in an, an open market. And, and it was all about uh, uh, reducing your coordination costs essentially inside the firm. Uh, so with our technology, um, we can imagine a future where um, instead of large companies, large monolithic companies, we can imagine projects or companies that are smaller, loosely coupled functional units uh, that coordinate and operate via protocols and, and via on-chain governance um, at consensus, uh, as you said, uh, we're working to inspire and empower the builder and everyone. And we believe decentralized technology will enable everyone to have essentially greater economic agency in their lives and far more direct political agency. So leadership in that sort of context will still be important um, as decentralized society emerges um, and the decentralized economy builds itself. Um, there will just be far more leaders of far more projects um, or companies and the average size of those companies will be far smaller than the average today. Uh, but so many of those projects will be fluidly connected to one another uh, via protocols, um, via uh, decentralized collaboration and governance. Um, so it will probably be more efficient um, to have those um, self-contained functional units than having them work together inside a, a traditional company. Um, so leaders uh, will be all over the place and they'll, they'll uh, um, need diverse skills based on their context. Great. Um, so aside from that, I feel like, like uh, uh, comparing to other industries, um, a, a person with the correct skill sets and the right moral fiber can succeed in any industry. Um, for Ethereum, what are things can, we can do as an industry uh, in your vision um, to in establishing a new trust foundation, uh, what can we do to attract uh, those leaders to come into this industry? Um, so Ethereum um, has distinguished itself as um, what I think of as the largest uh, decentralized protocol ecosystem. I call it Metropolitan Ethereum because it's uh, Ethereum proper, uh, the main protocol. Uh, but the protocol is expanding to, to layer two and trees and higher, and there's work going on right now uh, that's going to expand it uh, even more. Um, some leaders like Justin Drake and, and others uh, talk about uh, those dimensions. Um, I think uh, Ethereum, in my opinion, um, is um, the tightest, warmest community. Um, so warm that uh, we welcome all the decentralized protocol projects uh, to our events. Um, and we see the decentralized future as encompassing just a, a tremendous variety of decentralized protocols that uh, um, and will all be connected up with one another. Um, 
and you know it's about uh, intellectual honesty um you know, so if we can stick to um telling the truth about what we're doing uh, not embellishing what we're doing um we'll continue to be able to attract the best and the brightest um, researchers and technologists so we've been very fortunate so far and uh um, I expect that will continue. Great, great. <clears throat> so regarding the next 10 years of Ethereum, uh, what are some of the most exciting advancements in the ecosystem that you believe will shape the future of the technology and the ecosystem? Um, there are just so many. Um, so we've, uh, uh, you know, we've, or Satoshi really invented this this new kind of trust, decentralized trust, uh, and we've taken that and we've built um, a foundation of a new kind of system uh, that's very different from the old system. The old system was based on top-down command and control, where you've got authorities imbuing um, authority and trust uh, in the intermediaries. The intermediaries maintain ledgers or databases of who owns what and who has what. Um, rights or responsibilities um, and that worked really well to build a, an impressive society but it pretty much didn't work well for 99 percent of the people in in the society um, throughout history um, the satoshi invented this next generation kind of database um, that is inspectable by everyone accessible permissionlessly by anyone to, to deploy applications or use applications um, and upon that new trust foundation, we built decentralized finance, which is uh, um, profoundly um, more impactful uh, and serves the end user better uh, than traditional finance. Uh, and we're just starting to cross the chasm. Uh, so DeFi has crossed the chasm into mainstream culture uh, a little bit. NFTs have done it a little bit. Um, with layer twos, layer threes, um, with AVSs, via yeah, Eigenlayer and other projects, um, we now have uh, the kind of scalability, uh, transaction box space affordability, usability, especially as intense based architectures mature, uh, so that we we can um, build real applications for for end user consumers and end user enterprises. So. It's about to be on, um, and um, we uh, we're moving now. I think from the the heavily speculative phase of the decentralized protocol ecosystem uh, into a phase in which a lot of real applications are going to be genuinely useful to, to people and organizations. What about what about AI? That's been taking a lot of attention away from the blockchain industry. Uh, it's pretty relevant as it gained a lot of adoption this past year. How do you see the integration of blockchain and AI influencing the development of any new industries and the evolution of existing ones? Yeah, so uh, integration of these two most important technologies is so important. Um, I, I've written a piece that uh, isn't published yet. Uh, I think it titles something like uh, um, the the necessary integration of AI and, and decentralized protocols. So, so decentralized protocols alone uh, would have a massive impact on all the systems of the world, financial, economic, social, political, technological. If AI didn't exist, the world would transform and decentralized protocols alone would accelerate everything over the next few decades and make the lives of so many people better. Um, but it doesn't exist alone. Uh, AI would have a similarly massive impact uh, if it was alone and decentralized protocols didn't exist. Um, but centralized AI in the hands of big tech uh, could lead them to build the most powerful and dangerous tool for controlling humanity ever built. Um, big tech already does um, deeply concerning things um, and, and great things too. Um, uh, but imagine big tech uh, social networks uh, of today knowing everything about you and, and everything about every, everything else and uh, and continuing to have the profit motive uh, or a power motive uh, as primary. Uh, so um, the bigger AI projects of the future must be built as largely open source, uh, transparently built, 
and with decentralized governance and hopefully with decentralized mechanisms for sourcing data, for compute, for storage. Um, there, there are a wide variety of things that uh, uh, could be used. You can imagine ZK all over the place in those systems. Uh, you can build models that uh, you can offer uh, under zero knowledge. Um, so, uh, you can have data that can be offered under zero knowledge. Um, essentially every country, organization, community, uh, every person uh, in the decentralized protocol AI future must be in full control of the AI agents that, that they'll depend on because we're, we're really going to merge with them in a significant way, in the same way that uh, we're already cybernetic creatures um, with uh, our laptops and our phones. Um, it's uh, obviously going to be um, much more um, integrated uh, between uh, our AI allies um, and, uh, and us humans. Yeah, as, as blockchain and AI tech become more pervasive in our daily lives, uh, what are some of the key ethical considerations uh, we should address? Um, so I guess be good to people. Uh, that's an obvious one. Uh, so if you're a person, be good to other people. Uh, if you're uh, a non-human intelligence, be good to other people and non-human intelligences. Um, so I, I don't really want to say too much about ethics other than um, we need to define all the possible dimensions of decentralization. It comes down to decentralization uh, and the ways we can measure these dimensions, the the ways we can uh, do our best to keep progressing our most important systems, like the big foundational models and, and big um, crypto protocols um, towards more and more rigorous decentralization. Uh, if we get decentralization right, um, then communities should be free to develop um, their own ethical systems uh, that, that serve those communities well. There, there's so many diverse cultures on the planet and uh, uh, we might come up with uh, shared ethical systems, uh, but also um, a community could have a, a set of ethics that uh, serve them really well, that uh, it would be horrifying to me. Uh, and who am I to, to impose my own ethics on that? Yeah. Okay, now we kind of laid out what it could look like in the next couple of years. Um, coming back, what are some of the challenges you see as we get into it? And maybe based from your previous experience, how you have handled it, uh, just to gauge that a little bit. Um, so technologically, it's gone remarkably well. Um, so mostly, uh, I, I think uh, it's going to be a a very multi-protocol world. Um, lots of modular protocols interoperating smoothly with one another will have uh, coherent, um, relatively uniform user interfaces in the same way that, uh, that we don't know if we're interacting with a graph database or a SQL database or a NoSQL database or some sort of flat file uh, when we're using a Web2 application. Um, we're probably not going to know how applications in Web3 are splayed across different um, decentralized protocol database technologies. And, and it's great that uh, they will all have different characteristics um, for, for you know, blockchain with different characteristics, storage, etc. cetera. Um, so you know, build out uh, for scalability, usability, affordability, um, ABSs uh, are going to enable us to um, make it much easier for startups to build, you know, raise some capital, build a product, find product market fit, um, and then not uh, have to give away a giant amount of tokens um, in order to attract a community um, temporarily. Um, and so uh, and you can have people uh, or businesses validating your protocol or um, your prover systems or your solver systems. And um, that sort of effort to create the community um, can be much easier uh, with uh, the free state and, uh, and ADSs. Um, so it's essentially hard to shift um, one of the most fundamental paradigms on which society is based, uh, centralized 
trust in top-down command and control. So, so the sociological, political um, frictions are incredibly difficult. Uh, government and laws are difficult to, to shift. Um, so I think the best way uh, for us to help the world understand um, our technology and the paradigm shift that it's suggesting is to build you know, sufficiently scalable, affordable, usable infrastructure, uh, which we've done. We're, we're there and we're going to have to keep building scalability and affordability. Use pretty good on affordability, but uh, much better usability is still needed. Um, and we're there uh, so that now creative people uh, from the traditional economy from Web2 uh, can start building compelling applications for, for consumers and businesses and communities. So uh, we're about to cross the chasm, I think, in into mainstream culture in a lot of different niches. Uh, great. <clears throat> okay, um, going on a different direction. Now we're seeing the first, or we just saw the Ethereum ETF. Um, in, in your opinion, what is the potential impact of DeFi on a global financial system and what barriers must be overcome to achieve that impact? Um, so the, the Bitcoin ETFs, the Ethereum ETFs, um, are going to have such a powerful effect on our ecosystem. Uh, so, and it's more than just them. Um, it's, uh, it's the judicial system in the U.S. and the United States um, that has been helping our industry uh, because uh, the government, the executive branch, has been trying to kill or co-opt our industry. Um, the legislative branch um, has been doing what it does best, uh, which is do nothing. Um, and unfortunately, the courts have been uh, really quite helpful. Uh, so they're pretty neutral and clear thinking. and. Uh, They've helped our ecosystem. Um, the um, presidential uh, elections and other elections uh, in November uh, have been heating up, and uh, uh, crypto is a very important technology, and those people are starting to understand that uh, crypto is a very powerful lobby right now, a very powerful group of people. And so um, uh, a few different... Uh, Court cases um, had impact um, on on even the mainstream media, um, and that got the notice of Donald Trump, who opportunistically uh, and probably aligned with the with his philosophy, um, has jumped in and indicated, uh, especially in the speech earlier today, uh, that he he wants to uh, prioritize crypto um, as, uh, as an important foundational technology for, for the U.S. To, to get behind. And, uh, and he promised, for what it's worth, to, uh, to get rid of the, um, the frictions that uh, the government and, and probably, probably big banks have been working hard to, to put in other place. Um, uh, the Democratic Party, Kamala Harris um, is also working with, uh, with knowledgeable people in our ecosystem. So we expect both sides to come out with uh, some very positive statements and support uh, for our ecosystem. Um, but, um, it's looking like it's on. Um, and uh, you know, DeFi's, DeFi itself is still really raw and immature, uh, but it has the potential to be orders of magnitude better than TradFi. Uh, so, in a few years, uh, I'm pretty confident it'll all just be called finance uh, as the laws shift, as stable coins um, uh, grow really large, um, and as tokenized real world asset um, systems grow. Um, but those are simpler foundational elements, and, uh, and and essentially when you when you put some of those fundamental things. Um, on our rails uh, and traditional businesses start to get comfortable with them, uh, then essentially all businesses will, will start to run on decentralized protocol rails, very similar to um, the internet transformation of society where um, first there were internet companies and then every company was on the internet. Amazing. 
Uh, I think we have time for one last question. Um, I, I think like this this conversation can carry for hours. But as as for the people who are here today um, on the topic of leadership, what advice would you give to aspiring leaders and innovators who are passionate about decentralization and blockchain tech and want to make a meaningful impact in this world? Yeah. Um, so young people are so lucky um, right now um, because they were born into a very tough, very com confusing period. Um, but the period uh, that we're in right now is the end of uh, what I think of and many people think of as a, an 80 to 100 year super cycle. Super cycle can be defined uh, via um, cycling of different kinds of generations or it's a monetary and debt super cycle. Uh, but uh, with respect to finance, economics, monetary systems, geopolitics, the world is cracking up. Um, so um, fortunately, uh, as this super cycle uh, races into a brick wall, uh, a new super cycle um, has been um, establishing itself for the last few years. Um, the new, su new super cycle is based on decentralization um, and uh, and it's clearly going to be supercharged by AI. Uh, the amount and pace of growth that the younger generation will experience uh, at the start of this next super cycle will be orders of magnitude bigger and faster than anything we can imagine. Um, and it will keep accelerating. Um, so it's a great time to, to be a builder. Uh, pick things you care about. Uh, don't take jobs that uh, feel like drudgery. Uh, there can be so many opportunities. Uh, so um, work on something you're passionate about, dive in deep. Um, it may not work. If it doesn't work, you'll learn something and uh, you'll take it to your next project. The cycle of innovation is going to be so fast that um, you can imagine being part of a project uh, that rises so strongly and then subsides because some, somebody forks it and, and does a little bit better, but get used to it used to succeeding really profoundly for a little while because um, long-term durable success is going to be less common. There, there will be some foundational protocols that will stick around for a long time, but uh, the pace of innovation is going to be so fast. So pick what you care about, um, become expert, and growth will be everywhere. And um, you're probably not going to have one success going forward. You'll probably have lots. Great, great. Um, personal question: If you had to pick one quality for to define a leader in this space, uh, specifically in Web three, in Ethereum, what would that quality be to be a leader today in twenty twenty four? Can I pick more than one? I'm going to pick more than one. Uh, so okay, integrity, uh, tell the truth, uh, sensitivity, take care of the people around you, um, and dedication for sure you guys heard it uh, thank you Joe thank you for being part of our 2024 icon uh, looking forward to the next one yeah, thanks for having me have a nice day Bye. have a good day Joe Lubin everyone